Hey friends, it's your boy, Big TCG Fan, coming back at you with another video. Today, we are going back to my Ranking the Set series. The set this week is Invasion. Released in October 2000, it was the first set in the Invasion block while still part of the Weatherlight Saga. It came with 350 cards in the set and our first set in a while that had more than 10 legendary creatures. Our honorable mention is going to be Croesus the Purger. For three colorless, one blue, one black, and one red mana, you get a 6-6 six, six flying creature that whenever it does damage to a player, you can name a color, and then they have to show their hands and discard all cards of that color. It's a great card for letting one opponent really feel a good amount of pain, but it's too targeted for one player, and with bad luck, you could end up making them discard little to nothing. Coming in last place on our list at number 10 is Tisabo Tavak. For five colorless, one black, and one red, you get a 7-4 creature with first strike, protection from legends, and you can pay two black to tap to Sabo and destroy target legend. It cannot be regenerated. This creature has some great abilities that really can ruin a lot of other players' deck strategy. The problem is its cost. The five colorless is a very hefty starting cost that will go bigger as the commander tax increases. If this card cost a bit less, it would be a bomb that could really cause massive issues. It cost means it's a bottom tier commander that few worry about. Next at number 9 is Atelier Samite Master. For 3 colorless and 2 white, you get a 2-3 that has a tap ability that's highly flexible. You pay X white mana and tap Atalia to either prevent X damage that would be dealt to target creature or gain X life. It's not an overwhelming ability, but its flexibility is nice. Of note, I absolutely adore this artwork. In our eighth spot is Rith the Awakener. For three colorless, one red, one green, and one white mana, you get a 6-6 six, six flying creature that when it deals damage to a player, you can pay two colorless and one green to name a color. For all cards of that color, you get a 1-1 one, one green sapperling token. The fact it isn't targeted to one player really makes it a strong ability to crank out those tokens. On top of it, green and white are the best colors that have plenty of tricks for dealing with creation or buffing tokens. In seventh place on our list, we have Dromar the Banisher. Costs three colorless, one white, one blue, and one black mana for a 6-6 six, six flying creature that when he damages a player, you can pay two colorless and one blue to choose and return all creatures of that color to their owner's hand. So you pick a color and it bounces them all of their hand. It's a swinging ability that could really destroy multiple players' defenses completely. Like Rith, it doesn't matter who you hit as long as you get to pop multiple colors back to people's hands over time. So like one turn you hit one guy, name black, uh, or just any color. We keep in mind, though, you'll end up bouncing uh, Dromar if you choose one of his colors. But it's still a pretty sweet ability. Coming in six, we have Vertiloth the Ancient. For four colorless and two green, we get a 4-7 creature with a kicker of X. It has a static ability that gives all sapperlings and tree folks plus one, plus one. Plus, if you pay anything for the kicker, you get a 1-1 one, one green sapperling token for each mana you paid into that kicker. This is a great card for the color because green has so many awesome cards for both tokens and saplings plus plenty of mass creature swarm strategies aligned with it. Green is a great mana boosting color so its high cost is not too much to burden with. At the halfway point of our list in coming in at number five we have Kangi Ariel Keeper. For two colorless one white and one blue we get a 2-2 flying creature with kicker x and two colorless. When it comes into play you put x Feather counters on it where X is from the X kicker cost. It has a static ability that other birds get plus one plus one for each feather counter on Kangi. This is a tribal commander that plays into the perfect two colors for bird tribal and it recently has really gotten a lot of great cards in those colors that will help Kangi excel. If you like tribal decks, you're really going to love playing him. Taking out the fourth spot, we have Rhea Dawnbringer. For six colorless and three white, you get a four six flying creature that has a static ability that says the beginning of your upkeep, you return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. This card has an awesome static ability that can really grind creatures back into play and put a burden 
on your opponents to deal with with the cards that you're bringing back. White has the best protection colors. She'll be harder to remove than many of the other creatures in play, and her ability could milk tons of enter the battlefield triggers. The biggest problem, of course, is her mana cost. Nine mana is an awful lot to pay. Usually she ends up in the 99, but she's a lot of fun. Starting in our top three, we have Empress Galena. For three colorless and two blue, you get a 1-3 creature that you can pay two blue and tap to gain control of target legendary permanent. In the perfect control color, we have a great control creature. This creature can be a nightmare for so many different commanders, and the fact you can untap and repeat the ability without losing the item you stole like a thief in the night. All commanders, all planeswalkers, and so many other permanents can be stolen by her. The number two card is Hannah, Ship's Navigator. For one colorless, one blue, and one white mana, you get a 1-2 creature that you can pay one colorless, one white, and one blue mana to tap Hannah and then return target artifact or enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. This is a very powerful ability that has only gotten stronger and stronger as more and more shenanigans for both artifacts or enchantments have come out in the game. On top of it, her colors are the best two colors for both artifact and enchantment fun. Our number one card is the best of the best for a solid reason. Being able to tutor up something, place it in your hand without paying any mana is very powerful. That card is Captain Sisse. For two colorless, one green, and one white mana, you get a 2-2 creature that you can tap to search your ability for a legendary creature and then place it in your hand before shuffling your library. Tutoring is one of the most powerful things you can do in the game, so having a creature that can do it so cheaply and repeatedly makes for one of the best legendary creatures in the game. Captain Sisse is not only the best commander in this set, but possibly on the list for one of the best ever. Invasion was a good set that provided us with major staples like Phyrexian Altar, Elvish Champion, and Aura Shards, plus the above commanders. They're all pretty inexpensive and powerful cards that you will have a lot of fun playing with. This concludes my video. Please make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below, and share if you can. Peace out.